Just walking in the door and seeing the statue of Graham is always great. And I love seeing the children actually all touch his hand as they're going in. And I think that's amazing. I don't even know if they realise who he is. The Graham Connum facility was on the minds and in the hearts of the local community for about 20 years. The process first started in 1998 when we knew that the Papineri swimming pool in Fraser Crescent was past the Tuesday day. But also at that same time, we were very much into consultation and communication with Northland Smaller and Papineri High School about changing the whole Papineri Northlands area for people being able to travel into it, but also looking at the whole redevelopment of Northlands Mall. In the long-term council community plan, I saw that they had money in the budget for a, a swimming facility. And then when I started making inquiries, I saw that there probably were about three potential areas that were identified as being in need. Then it was just a matter of trying to push for Papua Nui and with discussions with Graham Condon, a petition was um, seemed to be quite a good idea. The first major photograph had, had me uh, sort of dressed dressed up with some goggles and, and a towel and, and standing in some green space just looking for a site for the swimming pool. He put a lot of work into getting a facility here in Papua Nui. Needed one something badly because it was really not much here at all when he first came on the community board and he was aware of that. It took from when he started, which was in 1995, to um, you know, get it going just before he died. And so consultation with Northland Small and that whole development also very much clear that the community saw what a fantastic idea to have a swimming pool right opposite the supermarket and that whole Northland Small so that Mum could leave the children there and go swimming while she did her shopping. We'd looked at other sites but nothing came up like the one at Papua High. When Papua Nui High School had been working for a, about a decade with the Northlands Mall, the Kiwi Income Property Trust, to put the Sissons Road through between the school and the mall. And that had the effect of opening the school up to the public much more and of getting big changes going on in the school in terms of its development. I've always had a very strong personal belief that schools should be open to the public as much as possible. They should be at the centre of the community and they should be used by the community. But up until the time of the school opening up with the Sissons Drive thing, the school was in essence invisible. Nobody could see it. So any chance to open it up, we saw as an advantage for the school and for the community. The foundation of the Graham Condon Rack and Sports Centre is a series of community partnerships. So there were a large and diverse number of uh, income streams going in there, philanthropic, commercial, good-natured people and of course the ratepayer. And it was the first time any community board in New Zealand had done such a major project with a school and a development, which was Northland Small, as well as the Ministry of Education. It's a very strong partnership between Papua Nui High School, the Ministry of Education and the Council. It covered uh, the land, it covered the fact that the Ministry through the school donated to the project. Now, out of that donation we got a fully fledged modern sports hall. Part of that partnership also allowed the school to use the sports hall during the day and the community to use the sports hall and the school's existing sports hall outside of school hours. It enabled us to double our gymnasium space, uh, which again we needed because the school's role had, had almost doubled in the last decade. The school trust donated very valuable land and let's face it, this land was right between a major high school and a very, very successful mall, a uh, top dollar but the Trust donated it for the Recreation and Sports Centre. And that process took a wee while, but they were so supportive of it. So when we heard that Ministry had approved the school, it was real celebration by many of us. It was about the community having a role. Had a partnership with uh, the Bok family, uh, Pack and Save. It's particularly innovative. Pack and Save allowed the heat from all their chillers and freezers to be transferred under the street to heat the swimming pool. The council approached us and asked if we would support heating the pool through the heat exchange. What happens there is the, the pipes run from the pool water and they run underneath Sissons Drive along the road and they come up the side of our building and across our roof. 
So it's a bit of a circular process where it comes to us, passes through the pipes, heats, and then heads back to the pool hot. Yeah, and it's good for us because we've got a lot of excess heat from all the refrigerant and the burn off. It's pretty much giving excess heat away uh, instead of wasting it. Like normally we would use energy to cool it down. Uh, we had a partnership with the uh, Kiwi Income Property Trust. Not only did they financially contribute, but we shared the same access ways. We did deals on parking arrangements, all sorts of things to make sure that the uh, the centre was success. Well, you can't just do it single-handedly. Anything they have to work with the wider community. Uh, I, I think in Graham, Graham's mind, any extra support you can get from the public would help push it over the edge. We did some uh, geotechnical tests of the the site and to our dismay and disappointment the ground was very unstable and we were advised to invest in additional piling and foundations. This came at a cost of about $800,000 at the last minute so I had to go back to the council going, Ooh, uh, look to do this properly we, we, we really do need a bit of extra cash. One thing I did have on my side was this really robust community partnership and the whole partnership sort of said look let's do this thing well. But of course halfway through the build process, February 2011, we had this colossal earthquake. Did it damage the pool? No. Why? Because we had 119 extra concrete piles going about 30 metres into the ground. So literally two weeks after the earthquake, uh, we made a conscious decision to keep on going with the construction of the pool. The pool opened later that year. Uh, the pool and the gym and the sports hall exceeded their design capacity uh, quite substantially for the first few years of operation. Out of uh, you know, a bit of a crisis, they a long-term benefit. The reason that uh, the community named the pool Graham Condon was because of the tragic death of Graham, a local councillor, uh, elite athlete and uh, a role model, particularly for community partnerships. The day that I learned that Graham had been killed, Saturday the 8th of September 2007, the phone calls that I had to make and, and have the community board at my home to break the news to them, it certainly became aware that we as a community board needed to name it after him. He was an amazing swimmer who achieved so much in the dis disability sector. He went, to, he was a Paralympian and he went to six Paralympics. All along he was used to mentor lots of disabled athletes and help them out and push them on their way. He trained with able-bodied athletes and they helped him and he helped them. And then he came on the community board maybe to, so he could put disabled face out in the community a bit more. It, it was his main reason and then quickly realised that he actually was bigger than that and it was the sporting and recreation community of Christchurch. He was the one that everyone went to if they wanted help for facilities. He was stubborn, he was focused and at that same time he was killed. He had been on a journey himself to be fit to go back to the Paralympics and so we needed to have that because swimming was one of his great assets. When we first started our board meetings we were in the Waimari Council and you had to climb the stairs and when Bram Condon got elected he said well I am not climbing any stairs, I can't. You have to change your meeting and the staff Really? We'll carry you up. No way, said Bram, you are not carrying me up. From then on, they really would think, well, is this a place accessible? You know, it's not just Graham, it's people in a wheelchair, but it's people with sore hips and knees like me, having to climb stairs and just change the thinking a little bit without having, having to say anything. They just change their ideas. One of Graham's mottos was, we'll give you a hand up, not a hand out. So we'll create the opportunity and we'll encourage you to use it, but we won't pander you. That was reflected in the design. There are no steps, there are no stairs. It's easy to get around. The doors are wide. People can get in there with prams, wheelchairs. People of all shapes and sizes and genders can use it. It's very, very user-friendly, which we thought was uh, rather nicely topped off in 2012 when it won New Zealand Recreation Association Swimming Pool of the Year. It's great that the pool is accessible. A lot of disabled use it. The changing rooms and the ramps in and out of the pool, 
it's a, it's really good. And I think sometimes people um, lost sight of the fact that it was a community pool and not another QE2 like some people wanted. He used to always say, we don't need disability car parks at the door. For those of us in wheelchairs, that we can wheel to it. It's really looking forward to being able to go swimming in his hometown. And he went to Papanui High. And so for him, it was coming back to his roots. The naming that was so appropriate. The unveiling of his statue, that, that artwork took a long time, but it's so appropriate artwork of Graham there outside the front. And people need to visit that and read it and have a good look at it because that was the icing on the Graham Condon Centre, in my view. And I always think it's just um, great. It always seems to be busy and it's light and airy and everyone's friendly and it's got you know really nice atmosphere and hot pools and cold pools and in swimming lessons and yeah it's a facility that's well used. Absolutely unique at the time I said it won the New Zealand uh, Recreation Association Pool of the Year but Graham's legacy of inclusivity and accessibility giving people a hand up encouraging them to use facilities is incorporated in every part of that building that's why it's so popular. I think it's been a win-win for the whole community I think that was one of Graham's signs and the community all coming together to get the facility was was fantastic really.